elke land het sy eie kostsoorte wat uniek en in jims is. Maar Zuid-Afrika is nie verskillend nie. Ons is nie verkos, maar meer vlees. Vlees het de basis geword van elke maaltijd wat ons dagelijks eet. Dit het een hele belangrijkheid binnen die traditionele, zowel als die moderne Zuid-Afrikaanse culturen geword. Als ons die vlees eet nie, wat eet ons dan? Die lys gaan aan en aan en aan. Ons praat van beboti, dis bultong, dis bredies, dis mopani worms, merogo, malva pudding. Wat is jou ginsling gereg? Chef James Beard, ya tswang America, ukile are, bosho kwa badijo, pure amaka ufela. Kimne ti moto emong le emong waja, emba, refapan tswa kese u resejang. Revota luna he, ma Afrika burwa, e kavale rata di jote fi. Um, South African food would have to be braai. Um, don't mean Definitely to be... braai as braai. well. It's local, so yeah. It's South African. Minang tanda i papa and his papa kus vedo mum suta wo inyama ye yash. Well, I must say that I've really fallen in love with Millie Mill. It's wonderful. You know, it's like a porridge, and it's something quite different, but the taste is really fantastic. I would say that I like my food because it's, um, it's unique because um, we have like a vibe when we have it. It's not just about the food, it's about the family and everyone getting together and having a good time. Well, I think I found South Africa and the food to be very nutritious and very tasty. I mean, I think you're very rich in flavors here. You should really enjoy your food because I think as a foreigner, it's fantastic. It really is. Kimu hem zanzi, seru tuile horle rata di jota mufuta man. Tokes A, ile dropo nya khauteng, utla bona di jota strate. Hantle hantle, upe wa. Wa fike kuseni mabu siksi wa funa inkuni zoku tibaba simlili. And then, wa fike wa ba peng. Sometime in the metro, wa fike wa tatelu kudla loku yosha. because impa ndi ba strong eh even your so so be one is strong among the one energy kai and it's cheap and it's support si si jili mi ne ne papa ne ne ya ne papa yeah same thing jele papa ne kale ke tlo ke na maso Oh, rather than Buddy McDonald, they are too And they are horrid. Oh, that's a good thing, Kayoni. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not. But what I like, besides Buddy Takeaway, they are tired of a feel or chile lunch. No, give for sure, it was Jacobama. Six. I want to just have see you. What I want to like, rather than no Oreca, this was a McDonald's, the Buddy, I did last night with the, especially if you had a long day. Oh. The most it's for everyone. It's for everyone. There's no there's no limitation and no specification. Hatoke sayi khuta, riakwa mozekaba, hota kopana lituli.
Olo bonsa real ho re pitsa e hatwa jwang. Ho latelang mo professor Rudolf o bua ka mathata a dijo dropong ya gauteng. as a food blogger from Zanzi style cuisine. Ek weet nie wat sy vandag vir ons gaan voorbereid nie, maar kom ons kyk of sy hier hier is. Hello! Hello, Julie! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Hoe gaan het met jou? I'm good, thank you. Lekker om vir jou te roep. Kom by. Kom by. Kom by. Kom by. Kom by. Kom by. Kom in. Kom by. I've been waiting for you. Oh, this is lekker om hier te wees, Toelie. This is my place. Welcome. Welcome. Dankie. I'm glad you're here. This is wonderlijk. Nou, wie is Toelie en wat doen sy? Utuli is the rural girl from the Eastern Cape, uh, a small town in Alis. Mm -hmm. uh, it's close to Afote University. Uh, I'm here in Cape Town now, I'm based in Cape Town, and in the Sebenza as a product developer. Mm -hmm. I also blog, I'm a food blogger, and I come a blog here, I'm Gumuzanzi style cuisine, mm -hmm. meaning Ukuja Kwasimzanzi. And Yemse Kose, you focus there up. Ukum? I'm very passionate about indigenous food mm -hmm. and I've studied food and cooking, mm -hmm. food science and nutrition. But I came to a point where I realized that, you know what, I've, I've never been trained to mm -hmm. cook my own food and I do not know to cook some of the dishes mm -hmm. from the different cultures. So it was um, a way of uh, teaching myself, exploring mm -hmm. the dishes and also sharing all that uh, knowledge with the young people of, the, of our country. And I also realized that um, there was a gap between the older generations, mm. our tannies, the grandparents and our, our parents, and us, the younger generation. We were moving away from that food heritage, we were losing that heritage. It was dying with the older generation. And I wanted to create a platform mm. uh, to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, that's where the, uh, the blog Mzanzi Style Cousin came about. Focus your need to When I started out, it was uh, Kosa dishes because mm. that's what I'm comfortable with and that's what I grew up with. But uh, my blog Mzanzi um, Style Cousin is about Southern African dishes. Mm. Uh, you'll see there are dishes from Zimbabwe, uh, there are dishes from Botswana, there are dishes from Lesotho, from the different cultures. And um, uh, it just try, I just try to get everyone involved from the vendor cultures, the Tsongas. So it's not just about uh, Kosa dish. <laughs> Tulia, let's say that a um, Yimsa Kosa is by your own gezond in Fetterig. So that makes you a bit fit. Is that wahr? And how moedig you mensen aan om gezond te eat? It is not true. <laughs> look at me, do I look right? <laughs> you know what, what makes people pick up weight is uh, bad habits, bad eating habits. And you need to, uh, you know our food, indigenous food have got uh, carbohydrates as a base, like your papa, umusho, umpokoko. And that's, and that's why people say we are chebiza, but it was portion protein vegetables from the different food groups not from group A1 If you can put that on and then we can start cooking. <laughs> We're gonna make um, a lamb stew and uh, morocco and feta cheese dumplings. Mm. Um, we're gonna start by heating uh, olive oil yeah. and then we're gonna add the uh, lamb uh, to the saucepan. 
just brown it a little bit and then we add the potatoes uh, the stock mm -hmm. and then we're gonna add um, the garlic and chili mm -hmm. and then let it simmer a bit add a bit of water two cups of water let it simmer and then while it's simmering, you and I are gonna make uh, the dumplings. Mm. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna take feta cheese and just mix it with the fl uh, self raising flour, mm. and then we take the morocco, which has been uh, soaked in boiling water. We add it to the mixture, add a bit of salt, add a bit of pepper, and then we form the dumplings. I'll show you how to do it, and then we put them um, on top of the stewing lamb. Then we let it simmer for say 15-20 uh, minutes okay. and that is it. It's very easy and it's very hearty. It's great for winter and it's delicious. But mm. I see that you have a little bit of a drink. Worms, what is that? These are uh, Amopane worms. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's dried Mopane worms. Um, mm -hmm. The people in Limpopo, Limpomalanga, they stew them and they uh, serve them with pap. Yeah. It's a delicacy. It's it's rich in protein. And uh, you find that places like Zimbabwe, um, it's uh, they buy it a lot and they cook it a lot because uh, it's a source of protein. And mm -hmm. especially for people who cannot afford meat. I don't know if I can wait, but I have to now. Here's here, bro. Let's eat. Bon appetit. <laughs> mm. What do you think? Mm. The flesh mm -hmm. is very lekker sag. Mm -hmm. The gyre kom very lekker uit. I get not besef dat dit in jimse gerecht so lekker kan wees nie. En weet jy wat? Dit trek nogal my oog met hierdie kleren. Have you tasted the dumpling? Taste the morocco. I must the morocco. Mm -hmm. So come and prove me here. Mm. To die for. <laughs> it is <Okay>. very nice. <laughs> Fantastic. So here I stand, and I eat lamb's bread with feta cheese and morocco dumplings. Baie, baie fantastisch. Als jij lessen voor hier die gerecht, kan jij toelise blok gaan besoek Mzanzi Style Cuisine, waar jij hier die gerecht zal krijgen en vele ander meer in jimse gerechten. Tuli, mm -hmm. ek is recht om ek verder te eten. Om te eten. Mm. <laughs> Cheers. Hey, ja, kenneti. Rekat habela monati wa dijo ta Afrika borwa. Empa, hobo shoko kwa ho hopula ka hore, ma Afrika borwa mangata hana dijo, kirli dijo ta ho pea. Tokes e, e chakete si akana food garden, ho tabona hore, ba leka ho lukisa tabe na joan. We initiated this project in uh, 2005 and have developed it slowly over the years as funds have become available and as we've had the resources in terms of uh, human uh, manpower and gardens. And slowly we, we have developed uh, that over time. The Siakani Initiative for Ecological Health and Food Security is a, um, an entity that also looks at the broader policy and strategic issues related to food security. We felt that uh, a food garden which is close to where our beneficiaries live and work would be one way of showing how to improve nutrition. In other words, by showing people how to grow food, by growing the food, by providing these beneficiaries with a range of different vegetables, fruits, legumes and herbs, in this way we would um, allow them to improve their nutrition. The produce that we harvest here, uh, we provide the early childhood development centers and some of the NGOs in the city with the seasonal produce uh, on a fairly regular basis. We've, we consider training as a very important aspect of our work. And so we provide a range of uh, training courses in basic permaculture, 
in more in advanced permaculture, which helps people design their own gardens, um, in how to grow the food, in how to um, prepare the food, um, and generally in terms of promoting health in general. As well as. Hot hot is a good Repella Timo, Rebero Hutele Kitchen, Le Aya, Ha Koka Lim Zwandili, Mungwa Restaurante. Lil Laura, yeah, it's all about health. Spinach in. Um, spinach has a very high iron content um, as well as a very high vitamin B content and also um, one of the B vitamins is folate which is very good for pregnant women. Um, it prevents neural tube defects in the babies. So what we're essentially trying to create is a meal that is very nutrient dense. Um, we've got tomatoes and cooked tomatoes um, are known to have something called lycopene which is very good for um, heart disease. We've added some garlic which has antiviral properties and now we're adding some mushrooms grown here in our mushroom house. Um, mushrooms have a very high protein content as well as um, many medicinal properties. Um, in fact a mushroom steak about this size has almost the same protein content as a normal meat steak. So it's a very cheap and easily accessible option for um, people who can't afford meat protein. So we're just going to let that cook for a bit. So what we've created is a meal using only seasonal ingredients, cheap, easy, accessible and something that anyone can prepare. And that has a lot of disease and, and health benefits. So in the kitchen today, we are talking to traditional food restaurant owner Umzandile, as well as Laura from All About Health. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks. So Umzandile, where did your love for traditional food come from that would prompt you to open a restaurant? Well, I think it boils down to where we come from, you know, what you're exposed to eating growing up. And I suppose going out and also wanting to go to a place that serves what your mom and your grandmother cooked. And also that's sort of something that prompted me to go down that direction. Okay. And tell us about All About Health, Laura. Oh, yeah. All About Health started as an educational platform to actually teach people about their health. And one of the cornerstones of good health is nutrition. Mm. And I mean, um, can, for instance, certain traditional foods assist in terms of helping alleviate diseases or prevent certain diseases, um, hypertension, gout maybe? Are there certain foods that can help with those issues, diabetes? Absolutely. Well, I, uh, it's actually interesting because one of the staple diets of Africa being maize was never actually grown originally on the African continent. It's something that's imported from North America. And ironically, sorghum, which was developed in Africa, um, somewhere around Western Africa and then introduced to the rest of Africa, it's native to Africa and it's now um, grown predominantly in the USA. So it's amazing how things have switched around. But yeah. actually, sorghum is way healthier than maize. And because it's got its roots literally in South Africa and in Africa, it's a lot better for us. And in fact, sorghum is actually very high in things like phenols and antioxidants. Mm -hmm. These are certain types of sorghum, and they can be very useful in preventing things like certain cancers, lowering blood pressure, um, circumventing diabetes, and that kind of thing. So to answer your question, yes, eating traditional foods, depending on the type of food, can be really good for your health. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it also just means that as South Africans, maybe we need to shift 
our mindset in terms of how we prepare food and just open ourselves up like you're saying we're so used to me maize and millies that you know isogam and isogam is an amabele right yeah, yeah. yeah. and well that would explain it my yeah. mother's always saying to give my son amabele instead of mealy meal porridge that would explain it so it's all about shifting the mindset there how would you make um you know traditional healthier food um indigenously south african and or african food more appealing to people i mean we've got things like people on sundays you've got seven colors on the plate yes. you know and that's just like pumping their plate with various vegetables and all of that you know but i think it's more sort of like the introduction of uh, vegetables because i know as traditional we eat a lot of meat you know and that is possibly you know looking at alternatives but i think it's more sort of getting to know our local vegetables and mm. like instead of using i mean in spinach, what's the other one? Marofino. 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 Yeah. yeah, you know, and we just need to further that education and get to sort of start to believe that what is traditional or indigenous is not necessarily taboo or, mm. or a mm. bad thing. You know? And it's actually quite good. It is, <laughs> it it is, is great. <laughs> is there anything you'd like to add, Laura? <laughs> well, you know, what you were saying just now, it's also understanding your food. So, for instance, your point earlier on about um, various diseases, the maize is seen as creating insulin resistance and diabetes in people, and it is one of the problems. But if you have your maize cold, so if you cook your mini puff and you're allowed to cool down, it's actually a lot healthier eating it cool oh, wow. than hot because hot it's actually got a very high GI value which is not good for you okay. but if you let it cool down and you eat it cold it actually lowers the GI value so it's knowing things like that mm. and also supplementing mm. um, with other foods so if you are going to have mealy pup make sure that you supplement it either with some kind of beans or legumes to increase the protein value mm. but also vegetables and other high fiber things that actually create a better, more balanced meal. Interesting stuff. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but it's been great talking with you. Thank you so much for sharing. And let's keep talking about it on Facebook and on, on Twitter. Let us know what you think about um, traditional food. Do you like traditional food? Do you cook traditional food? Or do you only go to restaurants to have traditional food? <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. Hari <laughs> Sele bale ho kopa na lona Facebook ung kapare romele mai kutwa alona ho double three one two zero.